killing scene. So, oh my! So, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, who knows what will be edited in and out. I know they're still looking for sponsors for it. So this is for Clown Motel Three. So if you want to sponsor, or even I don't know if those spots are still available, but like if you want to be killed by me, <laughs> I, I, I would recommend. I, I'm, I'm promoting me now, so because I want to, I want to be in it. I can't act. I, I, I can barely speak, <laughs> but I definitely can't act. And I've never claimed to or anything like that. That's why I was really shocked. And I was like, oh, gosh, I hope my line turned out pretty good. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Talking About Cars with Randy Cardoon podcast featuring the one, the only, Hot Rod Bob back. Yes, because everybody has a car story we are in our talking about cars two tired guys studios in western washington bob joining us again from our studios near the beach near southern california's ventura county for a very special show and i say it's yes. special because we're featuring a real friend of the program and for a long yes. time she's been on our list of people we needed to get on the show yep oh yeah won the, the one the only hot rod holly joining us today yes <laughs> She is the princess of horsepower and cool rides in the San Diego and LA areas, considered a real automotive influencer and walks yes. the walk right up to what's in her garage, like what's over my shoulder here. That's her truck. We're going to have more with Holly as she explains what's going on. And you can see Bob has Holly right over his shoulder. Yes. You, know, you, you probably got the better deal on that. I, I don't know I, as far as what's I over think so. Shoulder. Yes. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah. So that's going to be uh, Holly's joining us in just a moment or so. But first, just a reminder, if you'd like to uh, join the Talking About Cars Nation and get to wear our logo proudly on a shirt. There you go. Or a hoodie or even with your morning Joe or morning Bill or morning Sarah, whatever her name is, or your morning tea or oatmeal. Well, head over to watch PowerTube TV. Click the merch button and you can order our new wearable garb. Look it up in your funk and wagdals, what that means. Except for the cups, by the way. You'd, you'd look silly if you were wearing cups. Well, there you go. Bob is now flashing everybody below the camera. <laughs> okay, but well, that's certainly something that's exciting. Uh, you can also watch all of our talking about cars on this um on wait. You can also watch all of our uh, <laughs> Jeff is trying to use a script. Yeah, apparently not. Okay, you can also watch all our all talking about cars. Oh, 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 okay, I got it. Here we go. And don't forget, you can also watch our all talking about cars all the time page at watchpowertubetv.com. We're also on the PowerTube TV channel on YouTube and a few other places online. So check Good. it out there. Yeah. So big welcome to Hot Rod Bob. What's going on with you uh, this past week or so, uh, car wise? I know you've been busy uh, after coming recovering from your road trips. Oh yeah, definitely recovered from that. It's taken me five days to clean my car from that road trip. I'll tell you, <laughs> and I, you know, between the engine compartment trying to get it cleaned again because. You know, the car was really pristine before we left on the trip. Yeah. Uh, going through thunderstorms in Oklahoma, dust in grass on the parking lot in Bowling Green. It's taken me a lot to get it clean. And then uh, we took it out this Sunday for a car cruise and it rained. Oh, so, yeah. uh, you know, I got to do it all over again. But that's okay. It gives me focus. <laughs> <laughs> um, Teach, teaches you patience that's for sure patience yes and i've got a new spray on uh you know ceramic coating i've got to put on this oh. is the excuse i'm going to use i've got to clean the car anyway might as what? well do it with this expensive stuff what's the stuff you put on your window rain 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 x rain x rain x, rain x. yes i bought yes. some of that because the uh 57 pontiac does not have workable windshield wipers so ah, okay. they haven't worked really since we put them in. I remember when I bought the car back in 2002 and they showed me, oh, it works fine, blah, blah, blah. That was the last time it worked. And it worked. So, of course. Yeah, it's 22 years later. Car looks great. No windshield wiper. So I put wait, I put Rain-X on it in case I got stuck in the rain. And this last Saturday, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Avants or Avants. A-V-A-N-T-S. It's a group okay. of car people who really enjoy cars and they mostly recent cars. They'll they'll take out newer cars to events and 
uh, that kind of thing. They did what they call up here in Seattle. They did the wagon fest. And oh. basically it's all wagons and yeah. they had music, they had food, they had all this stuff. And it was fun, but I kept looking at the forecast and it was supposed to rain like right up to when the show was supposed to start at 10 in the morning or okay. right at when it was going to end. Of and course. as I was walking out the door, I said, there's no way I'm taking a non windshield wiper car to a storm up here in the Pacific Northwest. No, nope, not okay. going to happen. Sure. But then I walked out and I checked the weather app as I was pulling out of the garage and it said, no, no, it's supposed to be an hour afterwards now. And I went, yeah. oh, so I backed the car in, grabbed the 57 Safari, took it to the event and, and? found and it did not rain during the event. So oh, score well, one good. for us. Yeah, score one yeah. for my weather app. But the interesting right. thing was, I would say there might have been 90 cars there, maybe. And really? about 10 to 15 of them were classics. That was it. Somebody took oh, a Subaru wagon. Okay. I think it was a yeah. was it a legacy wagon, but he had drag, he stuck it full of drag race gear and, and engine, uh, hopped up the engine and did all sorts of things. So there was that. There were, somebody showed up with a Subaru that was a spinoff of Ghostbusters. So they basically took an Ecto Cadillac. Yeah. And at least the design and turned it and, and turned a Subaru wagon into an Ectomobile. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. I mean, they had some classics of note too. They had somebody had a 63 Mercury Meteor. Remember that? Sure. Midsize. Yeah. Basically the Mercury version of the Fairlane at the time. And they only right. made the Meteor, I want to say two years, 62 and 63 and uh only one year they made the station way so that was a hmm. one year only car so we we had a little fun over there it was a lot of fun and enjoyable and it didn't rain so life was just good but enough about old guys talking about cars let's talk about female influencers and cars let's welcome our guest you know or you love her you've seen her at shows if you're in southern california <laughs> And there she is, ladies and gentlemen, one of the only Hot Rod Holly right here on the Talking About Cars podcast with me, Randy Cardoon, and you know who that guy is, Hot Rod Bob Beck. Uh, again, uh, amazing. Thanks for joining us, Holly. You are, uh, you've are you been the happy wanderer of the classic car set, and it's been a busy summer for you and your frequent flyer mileage. Uh, where exactly are you today? I am in Florida. I flew into Tampa, so now I'm not exactly sure. Probably, um, <laughs> some place in Florida, the other hours out of three to three hours out of Tampa. I guess uh -huh. I'm not okay. sure. Okay, two crocodiles and a, the map. yeah, two crocodiles away. You're right, you're fine. Yeah, She's lost in Tampa. All right, well, very good. Awesome. We have a general idea where to send the APB when you're missing, it'll be fun. I, we'll I would listen. check. I would check on my phone location, but I don't oh, want to mess no. anything else up. Don't touch the phone. <laughs> I know. I see. All right. Well, you've been traveling around a lot, but before we get into your travels, I thought it'd be interesting for people who, who don't really are not familiar with you is basically how classic cars got on your radar. How long ago? What was it that one day made you go, wow, look at this. And why do I want to be a part of this? You know, honestly, I just always remember watching movies and loving the classic cars. Um, I had a love for them since I was really young. It wasn't a family thing. My dad had some cool cars over the years, but they were also of somewhat of the era. Um, you know, I, I was about 13, 14 years old, and I used to work at my mother's. My family had a business. I worked at their shop, and I would think, um, you know, I would try and, and plan on how much how many hours I could work and how much money I could save to buy my first car. And at that time, my dream car was a 55 through six uh, for, through seven T-Bird. And those were about 13, 14,000 around that time. So um, I never ended up with that. My first car was a 64 T-Bird and I actually was like 20 <laughs> when I got it. So far cry from uh, what I initially dreamed of having, but. What, what was what was the name of that show? Uh, the one had Dan Tana on it, and he Vegas. Did you ever watch Vegas, where the guy drove around in a red '57 T Bird? You know, Robert I Yurk. Vague, I Robert Yurk, Yurk, yeah. That one. Yeah. 
I, right, I mean, we all know behind... that Suzanne Summers in American Graffiti. Graffiti, looks, yeah, okay. Looks amazing. Probably the best looking person in a in a fifty seven D bird or. Well, yeah, in an early two fifty seven or fifty six. Early bird. I don't remember. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you might be fifty six. Don't remember that, actually. Seven. Yeah, it, it wasn't fifty seven. Now behind Randy, though, is a car you affectionately call Little Bubba, or a truck. Yeah. You had the. I I can't remember. You not I have it. I don't know for like twenty six years. Twenty six years. Yeah. Wow. So you got it when you were four. <laughs> exactly. I mean, yes, yes. <laughs> Way to go, Bob. I'm okay. I'm thirty. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, so, so, I'm a little slow right now. I had to, I had to sit and get, uh, that in my head. So yes. Yeah, uh, so because I don't remember you ever having anything different. And as long as I've known you, we've known each other uh, going on fifteen years. We've known each other a long time. Yeah, I mean, the picture in the background for me was at the Dr. George show in uh, Indian Wells, and that was fourteen, fifteen years ago at least. I'm trying to think. Oh gosh, I can't remember. Yeah, oh, the, is that that's the picture you have up behind you? Behind me, yes. Yeah, that was that that was the yeah. Dr. George show put on by uh, uh Oh, that was quite some time Palm ago. Yeah, Palm Springs Yes, Cruise I remember. Cruise. Yeah. That's so when then, Bob had facial hair. Wait, no, you yes, still do. Never I still mind. Do. It just you know, just not as much. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I get it. That so, might look like Cat Stevens or Welcome Back Carter. Yes, the, well, the, I can show you the welcome back kind of picture, but that's a, that's a whole different story. Yeah, oh that yeah. Made, my, Do I want hair, to know this? And you, yeah, my hair and your hair curliness, not the same, kid. Yeah, I just had to <laughs> fritz myself and make myself look presentable. Oh, uh, it's, you look presentable. Believe me, yes. you look yeah. incredible. Just, yeah, spritzing no. your hair doesn't change anything, kid. No, You're, you know, yeah. So let's talk about the truck then and uh did you have something like that in mind when you were looking for a truck or did no, that just kind of I, I honestly wasn't even looking for a truck like i said my first car was a 64 t-bird um over the years i've had different vehicles i had a second 64 t-bird at the time oh okay so with trucks i actually bought and sold the shell of a 53 i the reason why i sold it is because i just never got it together so i just had i had to flip it um, so I saw a little 63 fleet side short bed truck up the street from my house for sale. And I thought it was adorable. I had bought it and, um, I had a 64 T-Bird, my second one at the time. And then like an 85 Cadillac, <laughs> you know, um, that I picked up at an auction. But so I had three vehicles and I had wanted to get rid of the Cadillac and the Thunderbird, but this guy kept telling me about pounding me about my truck and Anyway, I ended up selling everything from out from underneath myself, and I didn't have anything, and I was actually looking for another car. I was not looking for a truck. Um, oh, yeah, because I had a 60 Chevy pickup, too, prior to that, that I just never, uh, we never bonded. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I, and I went around, this was the days of the auto traders, you know, black fingers, taking people on their word, going up and looking at stuff, and having it being completely opposite of what they told you. Uh, so, you know, from San Diego, I did a lot of driving up to LA and um, every time I got there, it, nothing was what they had said. So yeah. um, my truck, when I got it, it was not what I was looking for, but a friend told me about it and honestly was the best thing out there at the time. So I needed a vehicle. Like I said, I had sold all three of them out from underneath me. And uh, so I didn't have a vehicle of my own at the time. Yeah, it sounds like, uh, so, so for those of you who don't remember way back then, when they used to have uh, the books and all that, it's basically the non-computerized version of Facebook Marketplace, because you can still <laughs> you can still go on Facebook Marketplace and it says, oh, this car is great and it looks like this. And then you get there and it's like, I'm sorry, I wanted this car. What What is this? You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. That still happens. That so. just happened to my mechanic literally just the other day over the oh. weekend. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah, that's just the other day. See, so it doesn't matter. It's just a little more computerized nowadays, a little more digital, yeah. non-digital version yeah. of that. So and pictures, I mean, basically, you know, you ask for pictures of all the sides. It's a little bit harder to hide did, stuff than black and white 
Did you also yeah. have a 60 Cadillac? I did have a 60 Coupe de Ville. It was pink. I bought it off of a woman. I got word about that vehicle. And uh, if you know San Diego, it was down there off Ocean View. I used to I used to volunteer at the girls club, uh, the boys and girls club. It was the only girls club left. And I used to volunteer down there. And one of the women I had known from there told me about it. So, yeah, so I bought her down in a, not the best area, but it, so I bought that car off of a woman. It was a one owner. I had it for a year. Uh, some older gentleman was on his way to the store to get his lotto ticket. It was Christmas Eve and clocked it. <laughs> so, oh, my God. Yeah. It was a lot of car. Her name was Sister Jackson. <laughs> so that was the woman's mother's name or what they called her. Um, right. It was a lot of car. It was a cool car that I would have loved to have had it today. When we first met, you had the uh, El Camino. You had, yeah. uh, there was another car and Little Bubba. I don't remember what that when third vehicle was. When you first met me, I had Stripe. That was my 72 El Camino. Right. Um, but later on, I had, and I wasn't looking for that either. It was just another El Camino came up because it was a 71 and it was same body style. But it was a true 454 Super Sport car. That, that's the I one I remember. A lot of rest, but that, no. was, that, that is, um, you know, we always say, oh, I missed that car. I wish I didn't sell that car. Most everything you could replace. I don't think I'd be able to get my hands on. I don't think financially. I mean, like I said, it did have a lot of rust. So, but, uh, but that was Muscles. That was my El Camino. And that's one I really, truly miss. Another reason why I missed that car, too. I always say my love is greater than my knowledge. I have rebuilt the motors on both my El Caminos with my mechanic. So, and I worked on my truck with my mechanic. Uh, if you ask me stuff, I, I have the worst and the shortest memory there is. So uh, I'm not familiar with the mechanical part of it um, too much. But like I said, I've gotten dirty and I've done the work. And uh, muscles, I did probably the most, the body work and the mechanic. Well, so I remember you from the big three. That's why I think I was so fond of him. Plus, he had a there cute name. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I remember you cruising big three down in San Diego with it. Yeah, it was a fun car to drive. So your pickup truck, Bubba, behind me, uh, you did a little bit of uh, creativity. That's little, little Bubba. Little, little Bubba, Bubba, excuse me. Yeah. You did a little creativity with the uh, the back of the uh, back of the tailgate, and you yeah. s spelled Chevrolet differently. Which, of course, this is something you always talk about. I don't know if you 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 were in an article in the Wall Street Journal. And that was kind of interesting. You guys have a chance and you subscribe to the Wall Street Journal, look it up. If not, you could still go to the Wall Street Journal page, get the article. And if you don't want to sign up, you can listen to somebody say the first few paragraphs of the article. And the interesting thing about that is, and I don't know if you've ever done this, Holly, but it says here it, it was done with an AI voice, which is a nice oh. AI voice, very clear. And then, but AI does not do puns very well. So when it tried <laughs> to say what the back of your car said, because it basically says Chevrolet, because of the Hawaiian theme of the paint job, uh -huh. this one said, On the tailgate, the truck has the letter T in Chevrolet replaced with an I. So it's spelled Chevrolet to fit the Hawaiian theme. Okay. <laughs> that's how that's how Chevrolet L E I became E I. Uh, so suddenly I'll, have to, I'll have to try and find that. <laughs> e I E I O apparently. Something oh, yeah. along exactly. those lines. So with the truck, a guy named Mark Lewick did my artwork. Um how I ended up with that, that is my favorite part of the truck because I think it's so cute and so clever. But that was Mark Lewick. That was the artist's idea. So basically, I had taken, I um, had met the artist through um, my mechanic, Colin. Um, matter of fact, the artwork that was done on there initially on the sides was a birthday gift, you know, um, from Colin. Um, so that was very sweet of him. Uh, so I had been going to Hawaii a lot of the time with my old boss. She had friends there. So her and I would go. And um, when, I, you know, I, I was racking my brain trying to think of what I wanted to do with my truck. And of course, being a girl, you know, I wanted to paint it pink. 
that year at Good Guys, like everybody had pink. And so um, it just, it was like the real popular color. And so I had decided against painting it pink. I mean, everything was pink. So um, I waited and I did silver with a pink pearl. And I kept trying to think of what I wanted to do as graphics. And I thought, what about a Hawaiian lei? You know, so that's how that came about. And I took Mark Lewis, just a bunch of um, Hawaiian printed shirts and dresses and told him the colors and showed him the flowers and stuff. And uh, he uh, like, I see birds, I see foliage. And of course I just said, you're the artist, so you bring it to life. And he did. And when I first saw it, I was, you know, like, <gasps> and then I was thinking like, oh my God, I can't be seen in that, <laughs> you know, cause it was so loud. <laughs> Uh, and then my stomach dropped. So I was, my emotions were really back and forth on it. Um, so that was in 2000, let's see, uh, 2005. And uh, then in 2012, the only reason why I, I know this is because he autographed it with Jake. Um, mm. In 2012, I went back and got the hood and we had talked about doing the tailgate. So that was something we had talked about way back when. Uh, I bought a flat tailgate. We were going to paint that. We were just trying to figure out how to cover up the T to make it an I. And so uh, that's what he came up with. But uh, yeah, I, I 2012, I went back to kind of cover up some of that road rash. <laughs> so, but, hey, if you look at my hood, but th I drive that thing. So you do, yes. you do, you you take yeah. it everywhere. And it's not just hanging out in San Diego. You, every yeah. time I see you in LA, whether you're up for, um, um the shows up in Pomona or anything like that that's what you're driving if it's in Simi Valley that's what you're driving which makes me wonder about yes. the, Cam the Camaro so what's the story on the Camaro <laughs> okay so I have gotten the 68 Camaro convertible and um I don't know. I was looking for a convertible. I was playing around with the idea and I was looking for a convertible. I actually was looking at a, you know, I know some people are like 68 Impala, but it's a big, big car. I wanted a big full size car. Um, and it just, it had everything. I It had like the AC, the power windows. So it had the extras and it was a good price. It was Becky. So, so, you know, I mean, the guy was fair and he sent me plenty of pictures. And when I finally decided to actually buy the car, he told me that somebody else said he was sending money tomorrow. Well, I was in California, so I could have sent my money right away. I didn't want to be a jerk. I didn't want to be like, oh, well, I'm going to send mine now because I had decided. I said, I instead, I let it go. I just said to him, I said, okay, well, if it if he doesn't, contact me. So I did end up with that car, and uh, somebody else, a friend of mine, has the '68 Camaro, and decided he needed to part with it. So I ended up with it, and. Uh, so it's being worked on. It's it should be hopefully ready soon. I need to do the wiring and just do a few things to it. And what is so. its name? Silver Fox is what I'm 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 pretty sure I'm gonna call it Silver Fox. I'm not a hundred percent sure yet. But oh. yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. All right. We know you're into yeah, cars. Nothing, nothing's really hit me yet. I haven't driven it. Oh, so you have to drive it before you know you what you're gonna it. call yeah. it. So, Sounds reasonable. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I mean, no. that's okay. I think Russell's got his name once he started rumbling at me. Oh, so. oh yeah, I can understand that. Um, all right, you're you're you, we know you love cars. You've got yes. some great machines. You've driven some great cars. How did you become an automotive or a hot rodding spokesperson? Like you, were? you know, I have had such a wonderful life in so many ways. And that was one of the things, it just kind of, it just came, it just fell upon me. Every just kind of fell in my lap. Um, basically, uh, my nickname, uh, one of the, one of the, I, I bartended for, for quite some years and uh, one of the musicians started calling me Hot Rod Holly. So that's how I got that nickname. Um, as for, as for other things, it just kind of fell, you know, Charger Steve, who's a car guy in San Diego here, oh, here, I'm like here, like I'm there, a, a car guy in San Diego, a friend of mine, was wanted to do this car show, and I, I didn't really know what he was talking about, and I was not one to go seek out, uh, you know, reality shows to, to be part of or anything like that, and 
he wanted to do the show with, they were looking for women. So he referred me and he said, just send him your pictures, you know, just send him a picture of your truck. Just, just do this. And so I went ahead and did it. And I was real hesitant anyway. So I finally decided to go do the interview and uh, they called me up immediately. So I thought I was going to do a reality competition show and, and compete against other women in their vehicles. It ended up being uh, against three guys and I won. I carried that trophy around for a year. <laughs> so, and I'd stick it on the I'd stick it on the hood because I was so proud of it. This was called My Ride Rules. It was on Speed TV. Okay. Um, I was in in season one, episode five. It was called Flower Means Power. I knew nothing about it. It had not aired yet, so I had no idea what the show was going to be about exactly, other than a competition TV show, and that we were just going to judge each other's vehicles and ourselves, like the people that the, the, the the vehicle, the, the appearance, performance, the personality of the person in their vehicle. And uh, yeah, that was it, I think. Now, is that the one you won? That's the, that's the yes, that's the one I won. Okay. And like I said, I took that trophy around with me for a year. It was, it was a lot of fun. I'm glad I did it. I was very nervous and uncomfortable. And, but it was, it was, it was, yeah. So somewhere along the line, you became kind of like the full-fledged ambassador of classic cars in Southern California, and 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 I find that interesting. So you did the TV show. Uh, I did, did I more did the TV show, but you know, I always, I'm I'm always willing to volunteer, help out. You know, people, I I help out, and I I do a lot of volunteer with car shows here locally. If they need my help up in LA, I'm always willing to do that whether it's i love being a trophy girl because it's fun um i i love selling the raffle tickets because it's fun you know so I, I love doing that kind of stuff yeah luckily no one's asked me to go around and pick up trash i have done that too though <laughs> like well, you, gotta, I just you, I just you gotta have a everything. line to draw you can't be just doing <laughs> everything for heaven's sakes there's gotta be self-respect but you know i just i'll always say is there anything you guys need do you need help with anything so um so that's probably part of it Anyway, but how I probably, I really got to say, I have a, I, I owe um, Joel Johnson Olympic powder coating um, for a lot of it. Basically, he needed another spokesperson. You know, he would said he would be a vendor at Good Guys annually and different events over the years. And um, he was looking for someone. And then he said, I, I can't think of who referred me to him. I know who it is. I just can't think of his name or the magazine that he had that was here locally in San Diego. Anyway, I was referred over to him and I walked up to Joel and I said to him, I said, hey, I know I'm probably a lot older and maybe not what you're really looking for, but I was told you're looking for a promo girl. So I did that and um, he says, you're exactly what I'm looking for. So perfect. So I just started promoting for him uh, at different car shows. And um, I don't know, it kind of went from there. You know, he made me a banner, which I, I, I kept the banner. I said, meet Hot Rod Holly. <laughs> I would put that up across my canopy and just go to the different car shows and um, basically just hang out. Yeah. Do you have any idea how many miles you have on the How many miles do I have on it? Yeah. I have, I have honestly, I have no idea. Like I said, I've had the truck 26 years and I've driven it quite a bit um do you remember I can't tell you, countless trips to la and back and I, of course i always wanted my if i was going to go to an event i wanted my truck there you know vegas and back um sacramento and back uh the furthest i've driven it was to chicago and back and that was for a route 66 trip so and that was just uh just a few years ago a couple years ago what was it like when you were in Vegas for that uh, car? I think it was a toy show and you had your own poster, basically a picture of you with the, okay. with the poster and all that. I mean, that must've okay. been pretty cool. I haven't been invited. I've, I've, I've done them a few years. Um, I am, I haven't been, you know, they have bigger guests <laughs> than me, but uh, that was, that was actually another thing that just kind of fell in my lap and I thought it was awesome. And they, uh, gave me the title uh, auto influencer so okay. they actually had that was uh, weekend of wheels it's um, a die cast convention and hot wheels die cast convention and um, 
they even made a little Bubba. So it's uh, remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's a Hot Wheels little Bubba. Uh, Mattel. Mm -hmm. I'm still working on with Mattel. I said they they need to make a girl line starting with little Bubba. I mean, oh. it is the ultimate girly truck. Uh, I, I know they, I missed out on it when they hit, when you had them. So when they go back into production, just let me know. I definitely need to. Need a oh, couple. Yeah. You know, I, I might be able to dig one up because I'm such a huge procrastinator that I was really lousy at getting them out to the people that wanted them. I had a list and everything. I'm just a procrastinator that way. So, yeah, I might have something around for you, Bob. Oh, <laughs> I, I, well, I make it too. So, yeah. Make yeah, it so too. I basically, I was just there, as a, you know, along with the other guests and yeah. signing autographs and helping out with things. <laughs> hey, I still remember when we go back you to a different gas. a different show we were we were down in San Diego together and you did the promo for <laughs> Speed Scene Live and the show I was doing there called Gas and and I had a hard time with that not very much but yeah you you you, uh, you pretty much said you, you always get gas with Bob Beck and <laughs> <laughs> Bob gets like, gas every time that yeah. happens to everybody. Yeah, everybody, I mean, you know. yeah. We, we used that on Speed Scene Live for a number of years. So you've been on the road a lot lately. And yeah, I think it's yeah, technically on the road right now. Yeah, yeah. technically on the road right now. But I, I was going to say, let's that's let's beautiful scenery behind me. Before we talk about your trip to the Netherlands and Sweden, I, I'm curious about the whole movie thing. You were in Nevada for some movie and you're walking around in clown outfits. And so, and there's a movie called the scary clown movie. And it's already I'm clown, getting. The clown motel. So let me tell you. So, okay. How that came about is there is a clown motel in town upon Nevada. I love cheesy roadside attractions. So obviously that's another reason why I drive my truck so much. And I want my truck to be there when I do these road trips. Um, so keep an eye out for that hot rod. Holly sticker was here. I have several different ones out and about. Um, so the Clown Motel is in Tonopah, Nevada. I had been wanting to do a road trip there and also to Rachel, Nevada, to the little alien cafe. Okay, so cheesy road stops. So anyway, um, I had been, you know, whatever, I'm like, Clown Motel, I've been wanting to do that. Then I had seen clown motel movie come out i was like oh my god how fantastic is this right cheesy low budget you know b movie um and uh so i had been promoting it i you know because i'm like i just think this is great the clown motel clown motel movie how awesome is this so i had been promoting it i was so excited for this movie to come out and i really liked one because it was fun um Anyway, and then I had met, I'm not really sure how this all fell apart, but then I had met uh, social media, the producer of the movie. And so for Clown Motel 2, they had, I, I don't gonna really know two? how. To, There's going to well, be a there two? Was a two? There was a two. This is oh. actually going to be three. So oh. I'm not really sure how the film industry works or anything, but they, you know, they, they have people that buy in as sponsors and they had different things available one of the things they had available was you can and and i was like that's cool i want to do it, it was like maybe a couple hundred bucks um like 180 or something like that it was something you could buy in and have your picture you know missing person okay. and i was like i want to do that <laughs> so, so <laughs> i i had i had sent in to be a missing person um in cloud motel too Anyway, when I watched it, I didn't really like it as much as one, I, you know, <laughs> now that I've met some of the actors and, and stuff that I think I'll enjoy watching it again. But anyway, I did not see myself in there. So I contacted Joseph. I was like, hey, look, I don't see, I didn't see me in there. You know, I was hoping to see me. I, I put on my moon eye shirt. I got permission from Chico and I sent in a picture of me in my moon eye shirt. Um, you know, say missing, <laughs> you know, killed, whatever, missing in the dead, last scene in the desert, whatever it was, was supposed to be. Anyway, and he goes, well, tell you what, why don't you come out to the movie? You know, we're filming. Why don't you come out uh, in August or was it August? He said it was like a year ago or mid-year. And so I thought maybe he just wanted me to come out, maybe do some social media and because uh, I was promoting it. And so then he asked me if I had any clown attire or whatever to get a clown outfit. And 
I was like, okay, cool. Then I thought, okay, he's just gonna have me walking around in the movie, you know, just like, just as as a filler, you know, just to make it look like more killer clowns out there, just to be one of the extra killer clowns. Anyway, they gave me three lines and a killing scene. <laughs> so, oh my! So, I don't know. Yeah, I, I who knows what what will be edited in and out. And I know they're still looking for sponsors for it. So this is for Clown Motel Three. So if you want to sponsor, or even I don't know if those spots are still available, but like if you want to be killed by me, <laughs> I, I, I would recommend. I, I'm, I'm promoting me now, so because I want to, I want to be in it. I can't act. I I, I can barely speak, <laughs> but I definitely can't act, and I've never claimed to or anything like that. That's why I was really shocked, and I was like, oh gosh, I hope my line turned out pretty good. Bob, um, it was Bob, easy, it was a little bit easier to speak with like the wig and the makeup, so I feel like you know. This is a first, see. Bob. This is a I'm first. Hearing. I'm I, don't hearing. Should, well, I don't know what they're selling those spots for, but I think you should because that's that's how you know a lot. I guess the certain movies they they do. I think it's a fundraiser, isn't it? It's, isn't it yeah, kind of a it's fundraiser? Basically, yeah. Yeah. So, is there any better way to raise money and you know get killed in the scene by me? I don't know. Like I said, I don't know if it's still available. I was going to reach out and ask him about it. Well, Holly, yeah. we'll have to wear our Moon Eye shirts together. Yeah. <laughs> I should, that's what I should have said, seen if I another, could have been a Moon Eye clown. Yeah, another edition of Who Wore It Better. <laughs> yeah. Bob, I seem to win every time. Uh, you do. I don't understand. Well, yeah, I do. I do. Uh, <laughs> I, I understand completely. Yeah. I don't know anyone who doesn't understand. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, it's the first time on this show, Bob. I think we've we've set a uh, absolute first. First time on yeah. the show, we we've talked about uh, offering to kill somebody just to get into a movie. So I I we've never done that before. I I think this is. Oh, uh, I, I'm waiting for. Going. I'm waiting for the police department to knock on my door now. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we understand you're for hire. I go, yeah. I'm gonna uh, find out about that. I'm gonna be posting it as soon as I find out. If okay. You're still for for parts because I know they're doing more filming in uh, November in Lancaster in area. I, I, Lanc Lancaster, Lancaster, Lancaster you, you, yeah. California. Holly, okay. you let yeah, me know. Yeah, so not too and, far away. No, we'll, I'll be there. You just let me know. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. I'll, I'll iron up my my moon eye shirt and I'll be ready. <laughs> All this to die on camera. See Cinema Deck yeah. on the program. This is yeah. we we talk about everything. First, it's cars, then it's cinema. I, I think that's pretty amazing. You ended up in Sweden, and it was interesting yeah. because when you went over there and you were basically watching the cars go by, they had a cruise or something like that, and and it was really hysterical for me and just about any other classic car person that watched because. Every behemoth car that you've ever seen in your life that would show up on late night black and white television here in the States, would we always wondered if they had just been crashed, munched, used up in demolition derbies. No, a They're bunch of them are in Sweden. I guess in the 70s or, you know, when we didn't want them anymore, Sweden swooped them up. So, you know, I was talking to you, that's, whose motorhome I'm in, uh, my friend Michael Wallen with Custom Mics, uh, he was in Sweden talking about this car show called the Big Power Me, Power Big Me, something like Power Big, Power Big Me. And I was like, oh my God, how cool is that? I want to go. It's so anytime. So um, I actually ended up, uh, oh gosh, I ended up talking to Robin Millar, who was coming out to Sweden as well around that same time. Robin Millar is the daughter of Pete Millar, drag racing cartoons. And uh, so she was coming out to Sweden as well. And like I said, it was just like the same, the same time frame. And so I planned a trip to go to Sweden. First, at first I ended up in, in Luleå, which is northern Sweden. That was, um, I guess, north of Stockholm or is how that ended up. And I was at, it's called Pitya Dragway, um, home of the mosquitoes. <laughs> I don't know, but the mosquito was their logo. The but mosquitoes. I had an amazing time. Okay. Huh? Yeah. The mosquitoes. Yeah, I had an amazing okay. time. That was so much fun. Mosquitoes Bob, had four wheels. To show. 
I, I've been asked to a few times. You Robin, should. You. I, I just had such a blast. You guys would love it. Yeah, Robin's been trying to get me to go over uh, for the last couple of years. We have a I couple of friends, gonna... Jessica yeah. and Eunice. Jessica and Eunice, and they're gonna they're gonna be coming out here shortly. I think in October. Yes. Right. Well, what yeah. month is it? Don't they <laughs> usually don't they usually come out for SEMA or something like that? They they yeah. come out for Hot Rod Reunion and uh, Nitro Revival. Right. Yes. So they'll be here for a little while. And just to make sure, and I've told this story on the show before, but I used to have a 64 Dodge Polara and I sold it. I bought another one and ended up selling the other one, the first one, to a guy who shipped it to Sweden. And, oh, that's right. I was saying that. So I was supposed to be looking for it. And okay. So you found it, right? No, I'm just kidding. So <laughs> so they went ahead and uh, sold it. And I kind of was asking uh, the folks who we know from Sweden. And I said, is there a way to find out if that car's around? Because I've seen so many cool cars in Sweden that came from the U.S. And sure enough, he found it. And oh, it was, wow. yeah, he yeah. found it. They had, they had rebuilt the engine. They had uh, put a bunch of um, decals on it on the side. And, and it looked, and the way I found out it was actually mine was, uh, I was looking at it and I had done some things, taken some parts off the old car and put it on the new car and then swapped it out. But the one thing I did not swap out was the Chrysler Performance West Plymouth style heart, you know, that they used to have in the late 60s. And that was on all their advertising. It was kind of like a Plymouth's going to win you over this year. And it was a heart with a little devil's tail on the bottom of it. Well, oh. that. They, when I was looking at the pictures that they found, I looked and I went, I'm not sure that, oh my God, it's it. Because it was, the Plymouth decal was right in the back window. And I just, oh, it awesome. just blew my mind. And I just yeah. thought, okay, that's interesting. So. I wish I had, I wish I had known because I would have done my best to take a picture with it. And if we, if we ever end up going out there, I'm sure going to start looking for it out there. Because you never know. Oh. That, that Wouldn't that be cool to reunite with a car that you used to own? in like a different country i mean how great is that yeah definitely so but it was fun because watching you go through all that i mean bob they were you saw the video i mean they had yes. they had desotos they had big old chryslers they had imperials they were they yeah. were, they had huge they uh, had gm so, cars they had so many amazing cars it was i mean i swear i, I think they have every convertible I, you would think we would have them all i've never seen so many convertibles in one place and uh i mean i know a lot of a lot of also a lot of big you know four-door cars um just so many amazing cars it was just so fun and at that they event definitely like was... the... go ahead they definitely like the big cars i love big cars what did you say no i was I said just I had two... oh ahead. i had two 64 t-birds and a 60 coupe de ville i love big cars <laughs> i don't think a t-bird's that big a car not back then. Matter, but, no. matter of fact, I mean, even even like I really know very little about the Camaro. If you had said Camaro, I would have said Chevelle. If you had said Mustang, I would have said Cheaper. I always would have said like the bigger car is what I liked. Okay. Yeah. But, you're, you, but your daily driver's not a big car. You know, it kind of is. What it's is your daily driver? A 2013 Dodge Challenger. First and only new car I've ever owned. And it really is kind of a big car. Not, not Randy's a, got no, one. But I've it, got but a 2015. It, I've got a 2015, and it's it's believe it or not, it it really isn't a big car compared to the old. Wait, it's not a roomy car by all means. No, but it's kind no. of a big car. Maybe you know when I walk around. Well, my driveway's gonna slip anyway. So when I walk around it, I'm like, it just it's kind of a big car. Your Has anybody is, ever is big? Yeah. Has anybody ever sat in the back of your car? Very few people. Yeah. I have. <laughs> I have when I let my friend's husband, because we met up and, and drive to, and I let them sit in the front. Um, my my mother, who's tiny, I, I, I wasn't even going to get that. You know, I was before my dad had passed, I was actually looking at the Charger and um, or something else, things that I was saying, oh, I should get it, you know, if I'm going to get a new car, I should, I should get a car that, you know, start taking my parents around places. And uh, my dad's like, don't be silly. You know, what do you want to do that for? And I was thinking of them, of course. And he passed not too long afterwards. So 
um, it, w- it wouldn't have really mattered anyways. It was just my tiny little mom and myself in the front, but uh, yeah, so it, it's not it's not an easy car to get in and out of. And then plus, I don't want anyone scrapping up my back seat. <laughs> I understand that. Yeah, it's just a pet, it's a petted parcel shelf. It's I don't fun. think I like putting anyone in my car. You know. Yeah. I guess. Uh, you know, my, my truck, I, of course, I worry I worry about my truck. So of all the cars, and Bob and I always ask this of people on the show, uh, we always talk about everybody oh. has a list. Everybody has a list of cars that they want someday. I mean, obviously, you have the Camaro. You have Bubba, little Bubba. You have your Challenger. Uh, what is on your list of, let's say, one or two or more classic cars that you would like someday if you had a chance what do you like enough to get well i i i love the old dodges so i mean an old dodge i absolutely love them i think it would be i actually looked at one a while back it was a a a coral two-tone one that i just kind of fell in love with and i've shared it periodically over the years where i don't know where i just um you know, like, oh, remember this car? And I, I just didn't end up with it because I think it would be a lot of um, headache finding parts and maybe maintenance for it. But I would say probably a 58 Impala. I absolutely love those cars. They're mm. so beautiful. I love the 59 too, which coincidentally, I actually looked at a 59 before my before I bought my truck. Uh, wow. It stalled on me though. It stalled on me and I didn't have anyone to look at it with me. And uh, we had a little bit of a... a language barrier he his, his english wasn't very well and i don't speak spanish and so i was just really nervous about getting that car so would have been a nice one to have right now <laughs> oh yeah cat's eyes yeah, little, taillights yeah but little bubba that's that's you yeah. i know oh and and that yeah that's that's my life for a vehicle very good no that's that's very cool and by the way on that dodge you were talking about is that same era 50s ish that you were thinking of yeah yeah yeah, with the Carl paint, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So you and San Diego obviously are doing a lot of charity work. Tell us a little bit about what some of the stuff you do there. Well, you know, I'm well, I just did I'm I'm on the board of the San Diego Association of Car Club Council. And uh, you know, we just had our annual event, it's greatest show on turf, and it certainly is. <laughs> we just had that, and of course I volunteer for that one annually. Um, and I volunteer on the board. I would be, but I'll be on this road trip. I would be back there helping out with the Pontiac Club and the the uh, the Cops and Rotters. So they do they they merge their shows together for the last I think ten years. I'm going to say I'm not sure. Anyway, and that's the fall powwow, and. Uh, that's something I would be volunteering with. Usually they ask, like, do I want to be the trophy girl or help sell raffle tickets? Because I'll walk around and push those tickets, um, the ticket sales, because it's all for good cause. So that everything's for charity. Uh, anything, basically, basically numerous car shows down here. I've been out of the loop probably for the last year or two years because I've been so busy. But uh, that's some of the things I do get... Uh, it's basically a volunteer job when I do Wednesday night, but that's fun. That's uh, the El Cajon, uh, the Cajon Classic Cruise, and it's Wednesday night. It's been going on for years, and Charger Steve has been running it. He puts on an amazing, fun show, and he has uh, trophy girls and models, and I am one of the trophy girls and model. Uh, and basically, we just walk around and take pictures with the cards and then help out with the award ceremony. Okay, so my annual show, oh, my gosh. I think it's my like 14th year, my 11th, wait a minute. <laughs> so tell us about it. My 14th year. <laughs> I was counting on my fingers, I think. So I started <laughs> back in 2011, or was it 2012 with my first one? So Dave Stahl, who you were talking about, who I did the interview on the water, basically I went and helped promote a car show um, on KUSI News Channel, where he does, he did the automotive segment. And he was visiting me while I was bartending. 
<laughs> one of my customers was asking how Thanksgiving went. Oh, that was a long shift, a long shift. And anyway, I said it was good. And he goes, what about Christmas? I said, what are you talking about? He goes, what about doing a Christmas show? What about, you know, and I basically it came together and it became, it was Dave Stahl and Hot Rod Holly's or Hot Rod Holly and Dave Stahl's Christmas morning cruise. But so it is now Hot Rod Holly's Christmas morning cruise. Uh, Dave is too busy for it. And he says, just go ahead and just do it yourself. Um, but that's something that I've been doing for the past, uh, what, 14 years. And um, it's for, uh, basically, I had a couple of different charities early on, but I do it for the homeless and I, I do it for the Alpha Project here in San Diego. And basically, it's just a bunch of us uh, car people get together. We meet up in the morning. We used to meet up at the news station and do the news segment before heading off on our cruise throughout across town over to the shelter where we would drop off our donations. And I, I feel that that's a really good one uh, for the reason also, I, I tell people, I said, you don't have to donate anything to come on. I just come join us. And everybody's got you stuff. So even if you can't afford, because Christmas is a hard time to go out and spend money on other people, I get it. But we all have clothing and maybe toiletry items, and things like that that we've collected and that we don't need or we don't want anymore. And it's the perfect place to drop them off. And you're still doing something really nice for someone on Christmas. And they're so grateful. There she is, the one, the only, Hot Rod Holly, joining us on the podcast. And that'll wrap up the Where in the World is Hot Rod Holly Now edition of the Talking About yeah. Cards podcast. Yeah, I knew okay, that, yeah. but you could be somewhere else tomorrow. If you guys I like today's show, tomorrow. how about giving us a thumbs up on YouTube? Follow us on social media. Talking About Cars is on Facebook, Instagram, and X, even LinkedIn. We'll put it anywhere, just about. And don't forget, you can watch any of our PowerTube TV episodes by checking out video on demand at WatchPTTV. WatchPTTV.com or the PowerTube TV app. Then you just for a fix. He, he just brushed his teeth, can't do a thing with him. Exactly. Thanks to our guests, the one and only Hot Rod Holly Anspin, ladies and gentlemen, currently on the road. And of course, he's not on the road, but he soon will be, so get the hell off the freeways. Hot Rod Bob Beck in California. And of course, up here in the Pacific Northwest, our studios in Washington State. Uh, I'm Randy Cardoon. We'll see you next time on our Talking About Cars podcast. So long, everybody.
and those immediate responses to put it reverse and go back. My immediate response was like, I started closing, which I should open this window, I started closing and locking all the windows um, in a panic mode because I was thinking this is the beginning of every horror movie I ever saw. You know, where like, like the car is hit and then they are just disoriented to get out of your car and a, and a bunch of uh, Leatherface chainsaw Jason wearing masked <laughs> killers come and attack you. So, because he said that he saw some other lights back there, and I was like, no, don't. It's, it's a ploy. <laughs> They're going to kill us. <laughs> so, anyway, so, anyway, I'm laughing so hard because I'm laughing at myself. So, anyway, I started locking all the windows and stuff like that. And then before I went into a mode, and I realized, oh, I guess I should call 911. Like this show? Want more? Then head to WatchPTTV.com, the new 100% free PowerTube TV streaming network. Home of the best classic and new motorsports racing and build shows on the web.